Davia, fantastic 3-2 victory on the road. Can you give us your initial thoughts? Um, probably break the game down, I think. Really, really naive to lose the first goal in the manner that we lost the first goal. We knew when we came here that it was going to be set plays were going to be hugely important. Kind of set the team up with the starting 11 with a view to that. Knowing that set plays against is going to be play a huge part in the game, spoke about it. I think to lose the first goal was really, really disappointing because the crowd get behind him a wee bit and it takes us a wee while to settle into the game. Then they can play a wee bit safer in terms of they can bang it into wide areas, play it in behind you. You don't really need to take too many chances in the game. Um, it was up to Cameron, a few flick-ons, and then we get ourselves back in the game with wee Brucey. And honestly, I'm delighted for him. I know my wife shows me social media sometimes with the fans trying to get wee Brucey on the part, but he's not been he's not been quite ready. He missed a lot of last season, the tail end, missed a lot of pre-season. So, do you know what? When I, put, I told him he was starting, I was like so positive for him. I was just really, really wanting him to do well tonight and I thought he went out and I thought he was brilliant tonight. So anyway, he gets a fantastic first goal, great strike. And there's probably no many players in our squad score that goal other than Bruce Anderson. So he's in the team he gets, he gets his goal, gets his back in the game. I think that will get us into half time. We'll reset, be able to get a wee chat with the boys and go out with kind of tweak a few things and get them back out in the park. Then we lose that horrific um second goal. The same man that scores the first goal, but they'd swap markers at this point. So I think it was Joe that lost them the first time, Fitzy lost them the second time. So you're going at half time, you're a wee bit disappointed, frustrated, anger. So you get that out of your system, we say, look, we need to go and try and play, we need to get the ball down a wee bit more, get the ball to Joe, get the ball to Dylan, um, and then we get the penalty via VAR. Delighted for Sean, to be fair, because it would have been easy to bottle it a wee bit there, but he takes his penalty fantastically well. Gets his back in the game. And then we Bruce does unbelievably well in the wide area, wide left up there. He manages to get a turnover, he keeps pressing, he keeps biting away at it, and he manages to get a hold of the ball. He slips Christian. Christian uh, flashes the ball across maybe three, four yards, and uh, we get an OG from it. I need to watch it back to see if we had anybody in the area, but do you know what? We speak about that. That area between the goalkeeper and the back four, and that's the area we try to penetrate, and we might have got a wee bit lucky with OG, but. It's, it's actually patterns of play that we're working in the wide area and we Brucey plays a huge part in that. I was having a wee bit of a joke there um, about Christian. I thought Christian coming on in the last 30 minutes gave us a real impetus in the final third. I thought Jackson done really, really well for us. He was solid, but Christian's fresh legs coming on the park um, really, really helped us in the wide areas offensively and him and Joe have got a great relationship together. So really happy with the subs. Shinny went on, me Steph went on, Holty went on. So really happy with the stubs and I spoke about because there's a lot of disappointed players when they left them out uh, the starting eleven. But we've got three big games and I'm going to try and pick three teams that I think is what we need to go and win, uh, get the points from that game. But it's the first time this season we've came from a losing position twice. But it's the first time we've came from a losing position at all. So for the boys to go and manage to score three goals away from home, come come from behind two times in the game. I think it speaks volumes for that group of players that I've got in the dressing room. So, huge, huge credit to the players. Yeah, the one thing I was going to mention was the, the substitutes that you made uh, pretty much... They were brilliant, man. Yeah, yeah they, were, well, they, were, they were absolutely fantastic. They all came on and made a real impact. What was your thinking behind those particular substitutions? Well, yeah, at different stages in the game, so I thought we, Stephen and Pats were kind of... When they're getting bullied in there, I think with Power and Donnelly, they were dropping on setting balls, they were banging it. The midfield never really played a huge part in the game in terms of they were picking up, Kamarnock were picking up a lot of settings balls, they weren't really playing through us. So I thought I need to get a wee bit more energy in there because Stevens played a lot of football from a position of not playing a lot of football. Um, so I need to look after him as well. Um, so I put wee Steph on, he went on with Shinny, didn't he? Um, but that was when we were winning 3 2. So I thought they, they were thrown. I was looking at their bench. Fraser Murray went on. Ollie Shaw went on. It was just forward after forward after forward. And I knew they were just going to throw walls in my box. So that allowed us to get Shinny on. It allowed us to get Steph on and Holty on. We went changed the midfield three. Pitts went and played a little bit higher. 
I had to keep Joel on the park, to be honest, up top, because we needed him for set plays against, because I knew that was going to be huge in terms of wide free kicks, corners and throw-ins, because everything was getting put in your box. We managed to go to a back three, Sean Kelly dropping back into left centre-half, eye on the middle, and Fitzy there. Shinny gave us a wee bit of discipline, him and Holty and Steph in the middle of the park, fresh energy, and I thought they got about the park really, really well, closing down, try to stop the balls from wide areas, and try to start um, stop any attacks that... Commander Card, Joel up top, allowed us to get a wee bit of a hold of the ball to get us up the part and we pitch his legs, he managed to get up the part and support Joel, but pitch being pitch, instead of throwing maybe Ismer on to play up top with Joel in a traditional 3-5-2, two, two. Uh, we pitch probably just played off of him, so it was a 3-5 type thing, like a, a back three, two wing backs, and then a midfield four with Joel up top so it was kind of like a wee midfield diamond in there with him and I think it really nullified the game and never really, they never really hurt us after that they threw a few balls in the box but it was about it and also just coming off of so coming off the disappointment of last weekend and then also twice in the game going behind and probably bad times to concede goals but what, what do you think it says about the, the character of your side and the desire that they managed to come back and claim that 3-2 victory I think and I'm not just going to say my team because it's the staff, there's a lot of staff involved at the club. I've been at the club now, this is my ninth season, but I can hand in heart say for the last seven seasons, any player that crosses that white line, the minimum that they require is a work ethic, a desire, a tenacity, a hunger. You go and get the ball back, go and win your tackles, go and win your 1v1 duels. And I think what I've got in there at this point in time is maybe 20, 23 players that are all know what's required when they cross that white line. And every one of them give you that. I don't think there's been any performances where you could probably say the boys haven't put the effort in. The effort's always going to be there from that group of players and from previous groups of players, to be honest. So that work ethic's always there. That's installed in them for all the staff at the club, not just myself, all the staff at the club. Um, and they brought that to the table the night. I thought they were industrious, they were resilient, they were robust. And I think I, thought, I, I just think collectively as a group they should be proud of ourselves because this is the second game Kilmarnock have lost in 12 games here and the other game was Celtic so that shows you how tough a place it is to come and then you've went behind in game twice so that's a huge testament to the players I think they were fantastic and again I spoke to them I said there's one of our staff members went through a wee bit of a difficult time the last couple of days and do you know what that was for her so hopefully I put, we've all put a wee bit of a smile on her face I think you definitely will have, Davey. Thank you very much for your time. Cheers, cheers, guys.